So I want to describe the journey to you a little bit. Help you understand the need for practice and make you fall in love with the grind of that practice. The grind is something like that's repetitive, something that you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's usually not what the mind or the painter who is completely engaged with the senses in the painting wants to do. It wants to do here, it wants to go to the movies, it wants to do this, it wants to do that, da 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 nonstop, right? So it requires some discipline, some dedication, which follows the awareness of how valuable it would be for you to do that. If you think from your current present timeline self, back to 10 years ago, and you have to get a sense of the time in between that and now, he'd say like it happened in the blink of an eye, no? It's like it's almost, it never happened. I can remember that moment as if it was yesterday, right? We say that so much. But we never do the same thing looking forward to the future. We always believe that, oh, I've got 20 years, 20 years to go. Whew, that's a long time. But look back 20 years and you're like, that happened in the blink of an eye. That's the illusion of hope. The illusion of, if I just continue to fill those 20 years with stimulating my senses in certain ways and not in other ways, then I'll be really happy. And I have so much time to enjoy that. But if you're not going to wake yourself up, and you're not listening to the subtle impulses from your higher self to wake you up, and you're not listening to the catalyst that is pushing into your life to help you wake up, catalyst meaning challenge, confrontation, conflict, things not going your way, bodily ailments, etc. What typical people call suffering. That's the whole intention of this place. It's to give you a concentrated, condensed experience of catalyst to spark the choice both whether you want to be of service to yourself or more of service to others than you are of service to yourself. doesn't mean you shouldn't nourish yourself and love yourself. That's not really service to self. Service to self is dominating others, taking away other people's rights and privileges and free will and stealing in different ways, manipulating to get more from others. That's service to self. Service to others includes loving yourself and nourishing yourself. But the focal point or the intention in the relative side of your life is to make a difference, to aid and assist and be of service to others. In whatever way, it can be in very simple daily ways. It's, it's the love with which it is done. It's the sincerity with which you are willing to transcend yourself and to overcome yourself, to accept yourself, which is the same as overcoming yourself. You can't overcome yourself until you accept yourself. What you resist persists. The willingness, though, to accept yourself and therefore thus transcend yourself and open the heart and the space of your consciousness and your mind to be of service to others and to find a joy in that, which you will naturally do because that's how a service to others' soul is hardwired. It finds great fulfillment in being able to help others find fulfillment. You know how good it feels when you actually are able to uniquely, in the way that only you can, make a difference to someone. It feels good. But let's say that you live for another 180 years and you managed to avoid the slippery slope of collective dementia, of becoming a product of your thoughts, which up to this point should be known and accepted, meaning you can accept that, don't judge that, but do discern it. Do become aware of the fact that you are to a great extent, you have become, you've allowed yourself to become the product of your thoughts. And where did you get those thoughts from, you think? Were you born with them? How many of the thoughts you have about yourself and about life every day were you born with? Remember when you were smiling, looking up at mommy and daddy, one years old? <coughs> How many of the thoughts you're having today did you have that day? Probably none. Who were you then? Maybe that's more you than who you are today. At least in your own thinking of yourself. In truth, you're always yourself. But in your own perception of you, 
you have become, you've tolerated yourself to generate an image of yourself that's based on other people's perspectives, everything you've learned over the years. That's not the true self. That's not what you are. It's not having a true relationship to yourself. To regard to yourself as the thoughts that are fired off in the brain, which will just become deeper and deeper and deeper grooves as you grow older, if you're not paying attention, if you're not making an effort to awaken more and to rewire, reroute some of those thoughts and or let go of thoughts altogether and rest more and more in the presence that is now noticing my speech. The first elevation is great. Focus on that. Don't be too focused on the absolute unless you've practiced being present to presence for a long time or you just feel really strong resonance towards this. I just want to give you the context so you know the journey. And here's the beautiful thing. Once you know about the absolute, practicing being aware of awareness becomes easier. It becomes more enjoyable because you understand it from a different context. 